What's going on you guys? Back here today with another video. This is the final part of assembling this new Power Mac G5 that you've taken your time modding to fit all this lovely ATX hardware. So obviously we have the case, the fan guard, and the hard drive cage, and that's all that is left from the original case. So we're gonna add these two 92 millimeter fans and then getting onto the good stuff, we have my old Ryzen system. It's a Crosshair 6 Hero with a Ryzen 1800X in there. Uh, it's got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum and a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte card. I would be putting a 1080 Ti in there, but both of my 1080 Ti's are in my build where they belong. Um, so a couple other things. This is the RM850X, and uh, it was what I used when I had this system with the 1080 Ti. This is my old EK water block. It's got some purple on it, but it's not gonna matter. Uh, we have this lovely thermal take purple fluid and it's called purple, but it matches this pink really, really well. Uh, we've got a Western Digital one terabyte blue hard drive and then a Predator uh, 240 gig SSD. Um, this sticky tape that you're gonna need, the cheaper stuff is gonna be for the power supply and this more expensive stuff, this way better stuff. It's this gray, it's called emblem tape. I'll link everything down below on Amazon. But uh, yeah, this stuff is what we're gonna use to mount the radiator to the front of the case and the hard drive cage to the top because they're gonna be spinning uh, parts. So we wanna make sure that we get those mounted more securely than just with this cheap foam tape. So last but not least, one of the most important things you're gonna need for this mod, well, you don't need, but it's definitely nice to have, is this cable from Black CH Mods. And this is why I put the original power button assembly back in there, because this cable will allow you to use all of that front componentry um, and hook it up to an ATX motherboard. So we're gonna lose the Firewire, but if you had a motherboard that had a Firewire port, it's got a plug for that. And uh, yeah, there's a manual that comes in the email that he sends you when you order it. So I'm gonna need to look up that and figure out how to piece this together. But that being said, let's get started screwing components in. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I wanted to make sure to put some thermal paste on here and get this block and the RAM mounted. Um, that way we just don't have to worry about it later. So that's a, probably a little bit too much thermal paste, but it'll do just nicely. And then uh, what's important for mounting your block is to remember that it's gonna be inverted in the case. So very carefully, you just wanna drop this on here and screw it in and make sure that you have it oriented the correct way. Um, and start out by just getting a couple threads in on some of them and then we'll work our way around and screw it all down all the way. And we're gonna go in a cross pattern here, so about like this and then once we have our block on there we can go ahead and drop our ram in and since we have all four sticks we're just going to drop in and populate every single slot making sure we get that satisfying click at the end so um, i had considered painting this ram but it's dominator and i may want to use it on something else so it's going to stay silver unfortunately So once you have the motherboard ready for install, you're just gonna pick it up and drop it into place. And remember, this is not a typical case. You don't have uh, that little nub on the center point that's oh so common nowadays. So just gonna wanna line it up with your uh, standoffs that you installed and screw down. My suggestion would be the middle one first. So get that lined up and screw it in following with the remainder of the motherboard screws. So one thing I forgot is that with this particular motherboard with this large heat sink cover, you can't put this fan cover back on, this actual thing that holds the fans. So we're not gonna have these 92 millimeter exhaust fans in there. Um, but that's okay. I don't have them in my build. Uh, I just have the radiator up front and I didn't have them when I had this build with the 1080 Ti in it as well. So this will be fine. So next thing we're gonna do is uncover the PCI Express slots and mount our GPU. So with the mainstream series motherboards, uh, it's actually not gonna go in the top slot. It's gonna go one down from the top. 
but you just want to make sure you get everything nice and lined up and put into place and then it should just seat very nicely very snugly and then once seated you can grab your screws and I'm just gonna throw one screw in here because frankly that's all this is gonna need like that and then we can put our last PCI slot cover in there all right so now everything's securely mounted as far as PC components go it's time to move on to the fun stuff with the water cooling and then the power supply one thing I forgot to mention is that we need to plug in this uh, front power connector from black CH mods how I'm gonna run the cables in this build is gonna be just up along this side here it's gonna be underneath the radiator so you won't be able to see it and that's gonna be all of them because I don't have sleeved cables for my power supply um, that's where they're gonna go uh, with my build and with Dom's build, which is the same as this, all the cables are routed underneath the motherboard and come out where they need to. The next thing we have going on is we need to use this 3M emblem tape and tape up all of these contact points along this radiator and uh, across the top, I'm gonna double strip because this is actually spaced off a little bit and we're gonna use that to mount this radiator to the front of the case. Once you have the tape on your radiator and the sticky cover peeled off, uh, you're just gonna want to kind of weave it in there. It's not going to fit the most graciously with this pump attached, but um, once you have it in there, you're gonna set it down. Make sure your power cable is pulled out of the way and then just bring your radiator forward and stick it down and then we're going to flip it onto its side here and uh, make sure or onto the front here and make sure it's firmly in place once you're sure that your radiator is stuck down nice and firmly it's been sitting for a while uh, you're going to want to grab your fittings and your tubing and we're going to start plumbing this here thing up so you wanna make sure that you go from your outs to your ins on your pump and your water block, and obviously your radiator is uh, not important in that regard. So I'm gonna start threading in some uh, fittings here. Next up we have our power supply and basically we're just going to use this cheaper double sided foam tape and cut a few strips to put along the bottom of it. Nothing too major, just a couple small strips is all we're going to need. In the event you want to change this later on, uh, it's better to have less than too much but you also don't want it to shift around. So I'm just going to do these two and we're going to get that installed. Before you install your power supply, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you plug all of the necessary cables in. So I have the 24 pin and one SATA cable, which has something plugged into it, which it shouldn't. Uh, one SATA cable and then one GPU or PCI Express cable. And then uh, this board actually uses two of the um, four pin CPU cables, one eight and one four pin. So we're gonna plug both of those in. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we're gonna plug in the CPU connectors because they're gonna be hard to plug in later. So we have the one four pin and we're just gonna tuck the other side out of the way and then the eight pin and that goes right next to it. 
And then we're just going to try to jam the wires down in along that back side of the PSU. And we're ready to drop in this power supply. So again, kind of be mindful of your cables and, and uh, go ahead and just drop it in. I did have to take out the uh, water line between the CPU and the pump. So again, just kind of be mindful of things because you're gonna end up redoing it two or three times with something like this. So what I like to do is keeping this as close to the door side as possible and just jamming our wires kind of back in out of the way, um, push it down and we can start kind of managing these cables that we've already plugged in. One more thing I forgot to do was put the double-sided emblem tape on the hard drive cage and get that installed. But I did check real quick and we will be able to weasel it in there with uh, everything installed. So just gonna add a couple of strips to this and peel off the sticky side or the adhesive cover and uh, we should be good to mount. All right, so with the build completed, we are ready to go on to the final process, which is filling the loop and testing for leaks. So I'm gonna paper towel this thing and uh, get started. So it's about a week later and this thing is finally done. I had a couple of issues and I'll explain what they were. So if you look over here, this first pump that I had in this build actually failed. Um, I got the full leak test done and had it sitting there and I went to turn it on and it was just boiling the, the coolant right by the CPU block. It was too hot. So I knew that the pump was bad. That's actually my second one of those pumps that I've had go bad. So. I decided to get a new one. This is the V2 that I put in here of the same style pump. It's just an XSPC D5 uh, Photon 170, I believe. And uh, yeah, so that's just the V2, it's the newer one. And uh, I got that all put in and started filling it up. I didn't think I had to leak test. And once I put everything together and stuck it all in there, I uh, put, turned it on and noticed that I didn't turn the dial up on the bottom for the pump speed. So I was like, oh crap. And uh, I tried to just pull the pump and radiator out together and turn up the dial. And when I did that, I actually pulled one of the tubes out of the CPU block and leaked fluid into the power supply with the computer running. And I was able to shut the power supply off. It didn't shut off on its own. And so I just took it to my sink and dumped it out. I'll post a picture of that right now. And uh, I got it drained out and I rinsed it with some uh, isopropyl alcohol and figured I'd give it another shot. So I jumped the power supply, refilled the loop with it outside the system with everything running and it worked just fine. So I plugged everything in and then put the, put the loop, which was already assembled into the computer. And here we go. It's a fully built working machine. And uh, the only thing we have left to do before we set this up on my wife's desk um, is the best part and that is making it complete. We are going to put this door on the case. So here we go. 
And there you have it, the fully custom water-cooled Power Mac G5 in this lovely white and pink color scheme. And uh, yeah, this was definitely one of the longest processes and most challenges I've run into doing a build, but um, I think the end product came out worth it. So leave a like on this video, comment down below if you have any questions. Also comment if you wanna see a desk setup video of my wife's uh, setup. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel, watch me grow, help me, uh, help me move forward in this YouTube thing. And, Hopefully I can continue to make content that doesn't involve all the roadblocks that this had. So yeah, if you wanna see the rest of the series, click over here. And if you wanna see a random video from my channel, click over here. And if you wanna subscribe, click in the middle. So I hope you all have a wonderful day.